Welcome to our yoga and meditation center. So this is a question and session. Of course, the uh, name of our institution is uh, American Cultural Excellence (ACE) with a combination of, you know, Indian values. As such, we need the materials. We need the spirituality. India is famous for what? Spirituality. And Americans are famous for what? Materialistic. That is Western. The Western and Orient. I mean, sure, the countries like India, China. So, we are highly spiritual oriented. They are highly material oriented. So, a bending of these two cultures, this is what we want. And sure, Mind you, no religion has been, no religion has been founded in America, in UK, in France. Four religions have been invent, have been founded in India: Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism. Jerusalem, three religions: Judaism. Christianity, Islam, but India is a country where you find four religions have been founded. Religion with God, 60,000 crores of God, and religions with no God. Hinduism, no God. Buddhism, no God. Jainism, there is no God. All the Darwinian theory, everything we can find in Jainism. So, with God, religion, with not a God, religion, Westerners were shocked when to hear a religion without God. Yes, in India, a religion without a God has been founded, Buddhism and Jainism. Shia, we are Shia. Our motto, our religion is no God. Existence is the God. Where we see the sun, star, moon, the space, the entire universe is the God here. So this is what we believe in. No idol worship. We don't worship idol worship. If they call it as athe atheist, yes, fine. Atheist with a different idea. So whoever believes, in the existential theory, everything is existential. No death, no birth. Ever existential. No heaven, no hell. Like what Christianity and what other religions practice in Hinduism. No death and no birth. So, American cultural excellence. Here we teach American accent training, personality. IELTS and TOEFL, call center training. So various courses we teach, GRE, GMAT, TOEFL. So here, we have come here. Our sannyasins, sannyasinis are here. They'll be asking questions about life. And let us uh, try to answer the question. Here we have our sannyasini, Lishmi. She'll be asking a question. Yes, Lishmi. Yes, sir. Namaste, good evening, Atma Namaste. I'd like to hear um, what is love between a man and woman exactly? It's called unconditional love. What we differentiate and how it is true in this world and uh, what point of view that uh, we, we have pain and suffering through souls because one soul is departed, one soul is dead, the other soul suffers and what is the reason? that have been existing in the world that we are living. 
or separated for why is the reason cause of all these things okay so lakshmi lakshmi's question is about love yeah love between male and a female, female. yes uh, like uh, opposite sexes yes yes you call uh, it regarding a, you know some lovers something like yeah, that yeah, isn't yeah, it definitely. not between a father and daughter yeah. or mother and son or yeah. something brother and sister you don't mean no, that no, this is husband. something about uh, yes a man and a woman yeah. in love falling in love yeah. you want to know the meaning meaning and what exactly is yes. love if uh, one soul departs and one soul is dead why should the soul suffer the other soul suffers uh you have come from that uh, starting stage of love and you have come here to the death yeah and why the soul suffer mm, yes. soul suffer yes okay separation desperation mm. whatever separation and desperation and whatever yeah okay let me see here love what is love between a man and a woman yes what is love see here in uh, india we find many sanyasis go to himalayas right they pray 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 to get the salvation to get the enlightenment but a man and women at any age if he is completely all his body mind and heart and soul is full with the girl or with the boy a girl with the boy or boy with the girl when they are completely devoted to each other when they are completely committed with each other when he is not as he and she is not as she and he is given his entire thing to her and she has given her entire heart and soul to him that experience is called the bliss and joy and the pleasure and what the sanyasi was able to go to himalayas and do the penance for 30 40 years this boy and a girl can experience that but to find that is very quite difficult quite odd in india the marriages are conducted by horoscope the marriages are conducted based on caste religion community dowry height weight color then how can you enjoy the purity of love the purity of love love you cannot compare or purchase love love is something 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 you know something which you can feel just like the wonderful breeze you feel you can you, you cannot catch hold of it it will come and go so it keeps changing so love was such between a boy and a girl or a man and a woman or husband and a wife so it all depends upon they brought up how do they value value what is love so in present world we don't find much that's the reason most of the divorces most of the fight most of the suffering those most of the tortures most of the you know the uh, whatever happening lot many things happen in european countries nearly 60 percentage of people husband and wife go for divorce and in india it's slowly gaining up slowly gaining up and you can find premarital sex that is mefo marriage post marital sex as been not loyal to his wife and wife not loyal to his husband so multiple partners so all these reasons because of one simple thing that is called love l o v e and that love what is love the explanation they don't know they think by getting a graduation by having an income working in a multinational company or doing a business you earn some 50000 60000 that is a deserving thing to for love people equate money with love that's the problem people equate money with love that's the problem shia yes any other question and departing soul see uh, it is very natural that everybody born is to be dead every living being born is they have to die and departure is quite natural 
And what is there in crying? What is there in suffering? Of course, he or she should be happy that the soul has left the body. The soul has left the body. Certain religions are there. When you are born, they cry. When you go, they laugh and be happy. Let us be happy for the departure of the soul from the body. What is that? If you keep crying for that soul, then maybe it is an attachment. The husband cries. When wife dies, saying that who is going to look after me after you go? And you have gone. And who is there to look after me? So he is not bothered about his wife. He is bothered about who takes care of him. The husband dies. Wife cries. And she says at the time of death, who is going to look after me? She is bothered about her security. Who looks after her? And she is not bothered about her husband. So she is bothered about her security. So it's all attachment. The attachment towards your son, daughter. Attachment towards your buy property, money, cash, jewels. This attachment is the reason for everything. Live a life. Detached, attached. Okay. A life with a detachment, then life would be wonderful. All the root cause of all the problems is attachment towards living, towards your relations, and attachment towards the things. That is the main reason. Is there any other question? Here we have a Sanyashni Lishmi. She'll be asking a question. Yes, Lishmi. Yes, sir. Namaste, good evening, Atma Namaste. I'd like to hear um, what is love between a man and woman exactly? It's called unconditional love. What we differentiate and how it is true in this world and uh, what point of view that uh, we, we have pain and suffering through souls because one soul is departed, one soul is dead, the other soul suffers and what is the reason? that have been existent in the world that we are living or separated for why is the reason cause of all these things okay. so Lashmi's question is about love yeah love between male and a female, female. yes uh, like uh, opposite sexes yes yes you call uh, it regarding is a, uh, you know some lovers something like yeah, that yeah, isn't yeah, it definitely. not between a father and daughter yeah. or mother and son or we, something, brother and sister, you don't no, mean that. No, this is something been, about, uh, yes, a man and a woman in love, falling in love. Yeah. You want to know the meaning. Meaning and the What exactly is yes. love? If uh, one soul departs and one soul is dead, why should the soul suffer, the other soul suffers? Uh, you have come from the uh, starting stage of love and you have come here to the death. Yeah. And why the soul suffer? Mm, yes. Soul suffer? Yes. Okay. Separation, desperation, mm. whatever. Separation and desperation and whatever. Yep. Okay. Lashmi, see here, love. What is love between a man and a woman? Yes. What is love? See, here, in uh, India, we find many sannyasis go to Himalayas, right? They pray, pray, pray to get the salvation, to get the enlightenment. But a man and women, at any age, if he is completely, all his body, mind and heart and soul is full with the girl or with the boy, a girl with the boy or boy with the girl, when they are completely devoted to each other, when they are completely committed with each other, when he is not as he and she is not as she, and he is given his entire thing to her and she has given her entire heart and soul to him. That experience is called the bliss and joy and the pleasure and what the sannyasi was able to go to Himalayas and do the penance for 30, 40 years, this boy and a girl can experience that. But to find that is very quite difficult, quite odd. In India, the marriages are conducted by horoscope. The marriages are conducted based on caste, religion, community, dowry. 
height, weight, color, then how can you enjoy the purity of love? The purity of love. Love, you cannot compare or purchase love. Love is something, 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 you know, something which you can feel. Just like the wonderful breeze you feel, you, can, you, you cannot catch hold of it. It will come and go. So it keeps changing. So love as such between a boy and a girl or a man and a woman or a husband and a wife. So it all depends upon they brought up, how do they value, value what is love. So in present world, we don't find much. That's the reason most of the divorces, most of the fight, most of the suffering, those, most of the tortures, most of the, you know, the uh, whatever happening, a lot many things happen. In European countries, nearly 60% of people, husband and wife, go for divorce. And India is slowly gaining up, slowly gaining up. And you can find premarital sex, that is before marriage, postmarital sex. Husband not loyal to his wife and wife not loyal to his husband. So multiple partners. So all these reasons, because of one simple thing, that is called love, L-O-V-E. And that love, what is love? The explanation they don't know, they think by getting a graduation, by having an income, working in a multinational company or doing a business, you earn some 50,000, 60,000. That is a deserving thing too. For love. People equate money with love. That's the problem. People equate money with love. That's the problem, Shia. Yes, any other question? And departing soul. See, uh, it is very natural that everybody born is to be dead. Every living being born is they have to die and departure is quite natural and what is there in crying what is there in suffering of course he or she should be happy that the soul has left the body the soul has left the body certain religions are there when you are born they cry when you go they laugh and be happy let us be happy for the departure of the soul from the body what is there if you keep crying for that soul, then maybe it is an attachment. The husband cries when wife dies, saying that who is going to look after me after you go? And you have gone. And who is there to look after me? So he is not bothered about his wife. He is bothered about who takes care of him. The husband dies, wife cries, and she says at the time of death, who is going to look after me? She is bothered about her security. Who looks after her and she is not bothered about her husband so she is bothered about her security so it's all attachment the attachment towards your son daughter attachment towards your buy property money cash jewels this attachment is the reason for everything live a life detached attached okay. a life with a detachment then life would be wonderful. All the root cause of all the problems is attachment towards living, towards your relations and attachment towards the things. That is the main reason. Yes, any other question? Yes, I request a sannyas. In. Yes, uh, what's your query, sir? Uh, your Holiness, I have a question for you. Uh, why people are after money? Why people are after money? Of course, money is important, isn't it? Without money, you cannot yeah, do anything. Yeah, definitely money is important. But your question is, why people are after money? In the sense, uh, they give first priority, priority to money. And, uh, yeah. First priority to money, not for anything else. So because of that, what happens? Yes. So we are not able to balance our lives and... Uh, okay, that's true. So, why people are after money and because of uh, the only goal of the people is for money, so they are unable to balance their life. So, yes, uh, that's a wonderful question. See, the problem here is the society we live in, the society has made such a thing that 
if you are a jatcha, if you are an engineer, if you are earning money, then others will respect you. If you are earning, if you are having a lot of properties, if you are having a lot of jewels, if you are having a lot of bank balance, the society will respect you. This is what the society has taught you. And this has been taught to you by your parents, right? So at the young age, you go to a shop, you find your mother or father taking away money and giving and buying certain things. You find out your daddy and mommy giving some, you know, the paper, one paper. And the paper has such a value that you get a new dress, you get a new toy, you get a new, I mean, eatables. Child sees the paper, it grows. And from the time of the child coming to an understanding, till it grows as an adolescent. Money, 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 that's what it sees. To go to a theater, watch a movie, money. To buy certain things, to drink soft drink, you need money. So the entire life, the child has seen without money, nothing can be achieved. The money, the friends asking money. The transactions of the money, the importance of the money. So he keeps chasing after the money. Not only he, the entire humanity. Entire humanity. Whether he is a beggar in the street or whether he is a multimillionaire, there is no saturation point for having money. Even if you have 10 crores, you want 20 crores, 20, 30 crores, 30, 40. Keep chasing after money. They think with the money they can purchase anything. But money is not alone. The important is the good health, good education, good knowledge, good wisdom, your spirituality, your emotional balances, your physical quotient, physical quotient, emotional quotient, spiritual quotient, happiness quotient. All these things are important. It is not only the money. When you concentrate only on the money, then what happens? Attachment towards the money. The greediness over money. You have a car. You send your family. Car. That happens. The accident happens. You are much bothered about the car rather than the family members. You are so attached. You lose your day a female who loses a diamond necklace. She is very much bothered about her diamond necklace. She meets, she meets an accident where her diamond necklace loses. She is not happy that she has escaped without any hurt. She is bothered much about her diamond necklace. So the attachment towards the money, attachment towards the things, that brings a ruin. That makes you not to enjoy the beautiful things in life. Your wife's or your husband's, uh, uh, you know, the beautiful moments their children's laughter, the beautiful sceneries, the birds flying, the fish swimming, the trees, you know, once you don't have any attachment. When you walk in the streets, you can find the trees speaking to you, the birds laughing with you, even the street dogs will be talking with you. So your mind will be so no, empty. If your mind is loaded full of money, then obviously your life goes on to like that. Yes, any other queries? Namaste, good evening. Uh, His Your Holiness, I'd like to have a question about um, honor killing. Like honor killing, once the daughter wants to marry somebody else that is different caste or creed against our system. The father or the mother gets very upset that the daughter doesn't want to be married to someone again against the religion, culture. So in that that kind of affection and protected affection or protected environment, as a father and a daughter who wants to get married to the man again, so that is not accepted, that is going to any extent of uh, hurting even violent course in so many cases because we say that he is not my community, he is not my caste. In a jati, in a vara jati, in a kalam, in a So, on the mother, in that case of situation, how will he handle the situation? How will he train, uh, bring a harmony to the family? More of each school, 
solution you should have for a family or for a peaceful marriage or a harmony between a couple who wants to be married in case of love. Okay. Lashmi, your question is, uh, you know, honor killings, intercaste, interreligious, where they don't accept, they kill the boy or the girl. This is what the question is all about. Okay, coming here. You know about a, a country, India. India is a country with a lot of religions, a lot of language speaking people. And a lot of castes, thousands of castes are there. So we have divided, the society has divided the people. Stating that they are forward caste, backward caste, upper middle class, Telugu or Tamil or Malali or Christian or Sikh, Sadaji. So, in a country like India where you find honor killings, the fixed marriages, where else it happens? Only in Eastern countries. In, in Western countries, you don't find. A duty of a father, of a Western country father, an Eastern country father, or simply we shall, we shall take Indian father, an American father. A father in India, he has to bring up the children, provide education, after education, what is it? He has to find him or her a job. He also has to arrange the marriage, spend the money for the marriage for his wife, son or daughter. After that, is it over? No. He has to buy a house for him or her. Then after that, even his grandchildren, for his grandchildren, he has to do certain things, formalities. After the marriage of his son or daughter, all for all functions he has to spend money. Even for the delivery, the child comes to the girl or the boy, the girl comes to mother's home. And who bears the expenses of the of the delivery or hospital charges? It is the father. So the duty of the father here, a duty of a man, in fact. From birth to death, from the time he is born, from the time he takes the responsibility, or the time he marries, till his death he is committed to his family. He cannot think anything else other than thinking only about his family. This is what the society has written. But in America it is not like that. A father, once he marries, yes, he thinks about himself. But an Indian father has to think about his family. So family oriented life is Indian life. And in Western it is individual oriented life. So after a certain age, 18 or 17 or whatever it is, the children go out of their home. But here in India, no, he cannot go. Or the child cannot go. So is the society has made up like that. And during all times of his difficulties, whether it is marriage, or whatever it is, it is the, his relations come there, they spend money, they jointly spend money, his in-laws or his cousins or nephews, nieces, or relations, they come there. So it is highly family oriented. So society has made a dowry system, another system, at the time of marriage they give money. Uh, so as it happens, what happens? they get very much attached towards their caste and community. So once they find their foundation is shaken, once the girl loves somebody of other caste, other community, so he finds his entire tradition, entire culture, his whole foundation has been shaken. He's not ready to accept his girl or boy to get married to some other caste or community, he find, thinks his community is the best. So much attachment that he is ready to kill his, kill his loved daughter or his loving son. He is ready to kill. This is the reason. So the basic root cause of all these evil is caste and community.
This is the most important. Where in Western countries they are blessed, in fact, but also it is also a curse that here the father has more responsibility. There he doesn't have responsibilities. At the age of, you know, the time of marriage, at the time of marriage, everybody were they both a boy and a girl. They were pretty sure that in future anything may happen. So he and she. They save money for themselves. They educate themselves. Here, once a girl gets married to a man, it is the duty of the man to take care of her till her death. So she is quite comfortable here in India. When a girl marries, the parents think that she is settled. There is one word called settled. But it is wrongly a mistaken word. Nobody can be settled. It is a lifelong process of struggle. Struggle, struggle till the end. So now we are coming in. Slowly it's all changing. The caste system is slowly changing. The government laws and constitutional laws are there to take care of. And this particular honor killing is slowly, you know, people are trying to, police and all the judiciary taking necessary steps to try to stop this evil method. Yes, next question. Stop this evil method. Yes, next question. Uh, dear uh, uh, Holiness, uh, I have a, a question for you. Uh, do we really have rebirth? You mean to say death and birth and death and heaven birth. and hell? Yes. All those things, right. Rebirth, heaven and hell. So here, our philosophy, according to my, our way of thinking here, our in the sense, it is our own religious way of life. It is not Hinduism or the Buddhism or Jainism we are, we are following. It is our own way of life. Whatever the name you can call it. Universism, like Hinduism you can call. According to us, it is universe. Everything is an existential order. Nobody has created anything. If you ask me a question, who created the world? I can't say any question. Okay, if I ask, if, I, if somebody says God, then who created that God? And who created that God? It goes on. So who is the real founder? God. And who created that God? So the question keeps on going. So it's everything is in existential, existential order. Everything is like that. So whether you are born or death, you die, so you are here. So once again, it is a continuous process. The life goes on from one to other, other to other. It goes on. You are here. You never disappear. So whatever it is, it is exchange, existential. Everything is there. That's one thing. And life after death or heaven and hell. In Hinduism we say, there is one Indra and upside up in the heaven where Ramba, Urvasi, Manakashi will be dancing. You good, do good things, there you can go and see Ramba dancing, Urvasi dancing and Manaka dancing. So is it heaven? Even here we can see a lot of Nayataras and a lot of actors are there they're dancing. Why should we go up there and see dancing? So the Hinduism says when you do good you go up to the heaven and you can find all type of good things. You can eat a lot. 24 hours you can keep on eating. 24 hours you can sleep. All the time you can see dancing. Females dancing. And I don't know what happens for the females who go there. Will male will be dancing for the females? That is one thing. That is Indra Lokam they say. And if you do something wrong, there is hell where they will put you in the oil burning oil. There they will take some stick and hit you. 24 hours they will be hitting you. This is called hell. So that's one thing. And in Christianity, heaven, take your the soul goes up and they will be singing hallelujah, hallelujah. That is called heaven over there. So it's all, I don't know what to say. But sure, what we believe is nothing like that. It is existential. 
everything is here nobody no heaven is there no hell is there everything is there rebirth concerning rebirth the question the soul is over here it doesn't go anywhere even after death 80 years or 90 years or 100 years you live the body gets decayed it cannot last long it has a life of 100 years just like all the living beings including the trees it has a life and once the life ends the soul goes off as the soul goes off from one to other then what happens it stays here it takes one other form it takes one other life so this is what we call as rebirth so you might have taken this might have you been your 200th body or 300th body uh, which you have taken just like removing the shirt and wearing a new shirt so that is what's a life after death and heaven and hell so in hinduism all these uh, you know up in the heaven in the loka and in christianity hallelujah hallelujah after death nothing like that in our system in our religion there is no heaven no hell everything is same here existential so name of our religion is existism and all the people who are following existisms are exists that's all. so simple any other queries